Maurice is not flipping on his friend. Andy don't know when to mind her business or help out a friend. And this ain't Maury, but Zach, you are the father. What's good, y'all? It's your good sister, Erica Bain, coming to you right here on Erica Bain TV with another sister's video. And in this video, I am breaking down episode number 12 from season five. We are returned from the quick mid-season hiatus and back into the drama in the thick of it all. It's quite a bit to talk about. I really kind of felt like this episode was kind of low-key, but when I took a little bit of notes and I wanted to make sure I got all the bullet points of all the things that I needed to touch on this video, I was like, wait a minute. There's little two pages on my little thing, so there must be more happening here than I actually gave them initial credit for. So without further ado, let me go ahead and talk about it. Um, Let me just start off at the end. Maurice in this deal. We get a very, very small tidbit of Maurice in this episode. Thank God, because we have been missing Mother in the episodes. We need her energy. We need her vibe, her zest for life, a little bit of her messy touch, okay? And we're finally moving along in reference to Maurice and the storyline that Tyler Perry has for him in that He's been presented with a deal from the prosecutor. Now, the prosecutor also has lied and said that Sabrina has gotten out of jail because she flipped on him in the hopes of trying to convince him to flip on her and sign a document saying that he um, knows and admits and confesses to the fact that he knows that Sabrina is the one who actually did the robbery. Now, one, Sabrina ain't do that. Sh and two, Maurice ain't gonna flip on his friend. So the prosecutor is kind of dead in the water, which really annoys me about why he was so quick to lie and say that Sabrina actually threw Maurice under the bus to try to get Maurice to change his mind because I could understand not that I think that he's going to do it but I can understand why Maurice would then start to consider this deal because if he feels left out feels left hanging uh Sabrina is out he hasn't talked to nobody hasn't been able to make no phone calls or anything you could start to think some things and then start to think like maybe I need to save myself now Again, I don't think that he's actually going to do it. However, I do think that we're about to watch him come very, very, very close to doing it, unfortunately. But if Sabrina and Calvin can stop making googly eyes at each other and having their little deep, long talks and sighs, well, I guess they need to have that so they can make, make their way back to each other. But anyway, if they can get themselves together enough to realize that somebody needs to come for Maurice, then we won't be in this predicament. My thing is Sabrina. You told Calvin that Maurice is going to reach out to him, but why in the hell aren't you reaching out to try to help him as well? I get it. He is the one that got y'all into this mess, but you know that this is your little fool friend who has great heart, great intentions, but messy mindset, a little bit of toxicity and problematic nature to him, which is why we're in the position that we're in. He don't know that fat meat is greasy. He don't know that the stove is hot and he still wants to touch it. Now he knows for sure and Q will be out of y'all's lives. So you need to go and help your friend, girl. Call up Andy like, um, we need to swing back by this jail real quick because Maurice is still in here and he didn't do it either. Why haven't I seen that become part of the conversation, Mr. Tyler Perry? I really would like to know. And y'all let me know in the comment section down below what y'all think is going to result from this Maurice storyline. Do you think he's going to flip on Sabrina? How much longer do you think he's going to be in prison? And when do you think that Q will actually be brought to justice? We haven't seen Mr. Logan. Uh-huh. We ain't forgot. We ain't seen Mr. Logan in a month of Sundays in three years, but we're going to need him to read into the group chat as well because once all of this starts to come to light and the truth is revealed, I want his job because he needs to be held accountable for the stupidity that he allowed himself to participate in. Mm-hmm. Moving on. Now, in the same vein of the whole Maurice... Q, Sabrina, storyline of it all. Let's talk about Mr. Q, who decided to limp his goofy ass. Mm-hmm. Limp his goofy behind to the job that he don't even want after getting his behind handed to him by Sabrina and then Calvin, who decided to go to work on that man. And it's only for Sabrina that you actually still have your life, sir. Count your days. Count them damn days. But anyway decides to limp his behind into the job that he don't want only so that he can try to exact another shisty scheme another random ass ruse on our good sis danny but she is too smart for that baby she gets men so your little smooth skin 
fake ass smile and your sob story is not going to get you in her house and in her bed because you my good sir is what they like to call hobosexual mm -hmm. you homeless and you engage in sexual activities so that you can be housed somewhere going from house to house and you think that danny is going to be the next victim of your capers mr culprit but she's smarter than that. You walk in talking about you didn't beat up Jonah because he was waiting outside for you, which is automatically triggering for this girl because you don't know what actually happened. And that's where he lost me. Like, I thought that there was going to be maybe an inch, not even an inch, I'm not even gonna hold you. I thought it was gonna be a centimeter, maybe one hundredth of an ounce of care that I was gonna be able to cultivate for Q if he was able to generate some kind of genuine concern and protection for Danny. I was like, okay, it's going to be a long road, but maybe he can actually redeem himself. But he is on the next thing smoking straight to hell with VIP seating because he is raggedy and there is no saving that man. He is trifling and there is no better. The fact that he decided to use the story or actually create a story about why he is so beat up, why he's so banged up and why he is limping in, in all of that to that plays upon what you think is a story that could get you some type of sympathy from this woman by way of tragedy tragedy or trigger for this woman is disgusting it's truly disgusting like q walked his behind into this into this airport and told danny that he beat up this man in her honor wind up being beat himself but won in the end and then tries to compliment her flirt and allude to basically getting into her home and her like we see what you're doing we're not stupid shout out to danny for being like so a man who was already on crutches beat you with a baseball bat and you were fully functioning before you left here all of your faculties you ain't had no crutches you ain't had no cane you ain't had no bad hip or a knee and you allowed a man on crutches to beat you with a baseball bat, but then you also trying to sit up here and tell me that you won and you did it in my honor, but I told you to mind your damn business and leave me the hell alone, as you should. Go ahead. I don't need you to walk me to my car. I don't need you to see me to my house. I don't need nothing from you. And you attempting to say, oh, let me help you or let me show up. For like, no, no, sir. It's men like you. Mm -hmm. that make his, makes it bad for all men because the level of strategy and manipulation that Q is able to cultivate, to call on at a drop of a dime and play to the exact strings that are probably going to be the things that the victims, this case, Danny, also Maurice, what they're going to be most susceptible for. Maurice wants to be loved, wants to be accepted, wants to be desired by an attractive black man. Danny wants to be protected is in a very strenuous situation that you don't actually know but you can get the vibe of the fact that you are so strategic and manipulative that you actually want to play upon these these triggering things it's just like wow there's truly really no saving you anyway let me go ahead and move on because I'm spending entirely too much time on trash but that also happened in this episode and as he should he was dismissed now where you gonna go are you picking locks with this messed up side? I hope that you about to, you know what? I'm not going to wish death upon this man, but an appendix or something needs to be about the rupture. He needs to suffer consequences because he's been getting away scot-free and I wasn't mad about the beating. I get it, Sabrina. You don't want, you know, Calvin to kill anyone, specifically Q, and then he have to go to jail behind it. But also that man really did deserve to be beat. And that's just it. It is what it is. Now, in other news... Well, before I move on from Sabrina and Calvin, they have a moment after they have the whole beat the hell out of Q session where they sit on the couch and I guess coming clean or talking. And Calvin just really, really reveals how much he cares about Sabrina and that he would be willing to do anything for her. And I'm just sitting there watching it like, how is this the most earnest, the most genuine, the most loving interaction we have ever seen from y'all? And we are already four seasons into y'all's relationship, situationship, whatever the hell this is. 
at this point she'll get off the pot calvin if you want this girl say so and then tell her what are your deal breakers what are your non-negotiables what is not okay sabrina you clearly like this man you clearly enjoy how this man loves you allow yourself to do so girl and stop allowing yourself to be influenced by the validation of others because there is nobody in this world who is going to better be able to decide for you what happiness looks like for you than you my god moving on because they stress me out let's talk about our good sis andy who teeter totters on the line of being a very shitty friend and a not so great person but she always looks amazing and i just want to know when is your time gonna come to evolve girl when are you gonna get better we are rooting for you and yet still okay Andy makes amends with Robin, comes to thank him for helping out uh, Sabrina, lets him know that Sabrina's out of jail, cool, cool, cool. And then Robin reveals that he's stressed about the partners calling upon this next raise of funds and he's about one million short because he just handed her over one million dollars for her friend. <laughs> and Andy does not tell him anything that she knows about Gary being a part of the plan to make this happen and get Robin ousted. Did his $1 million not at least buy him that? You want to go ahead and tell him about some loan shark of a of a client that you had, that you magically forgot that you had when you was going to need this money to get Sabrina out. But now all of a sudden you remember so that he can get into another precarious situation. All because he helped you. He loves you. He cares deeply for you. Andy girl I just don't understand I don't understand what it is that you're doing this life that you're living and I get the offense like it was 100% wrong for him to try to run your whole facts and to pull your car and, and, and to pull your coattail about the Paris situation because it was giving little energy uh-huh it was giving insecurity uh-huh and I get it but Gary has also done worse and yet and still you are still fucking him Andy, I don't understand. You like Robin as a boss. You like his position here at your firm. You, you are on a track to probably ascend at a much higher rate because you low key sleeping with the boss and you decide to stay quiet and this man just gave you a million dollars to get your friend out of jail after already pulling strings and getting your other friend out of jail. I, I, I where did they make Andy? Cause I just don't understand this girl. And then that's just like a little the little random andiness of it all right that this stuff is normal when we arrive at the end of the episode i just knew i just knew that she had stopped fatima because she was about to run tell that about what happened at the doctors with karen but she didn't she's too busy i spying onto fatima's hands to see a tan line for an engagement ring that is no longer there and then you want to call her card on it what kind of friend are you if the girl don't have it on her finger and she ain't told you about it, it's because she don't want to tell you about it. And weren't you the same friend that decided to just go and, and blurt out about Danny's domestic violence situation as if it was random fodder for a, a, a superficial conversation, girl? Leave Fatima and Zach alone. Mind your damn business and get your life together. Because this is ghetto, Andy. At this, like, it's been ghetto, so I can't even say at this point, but enough enough girl you need to be focused on your cases and figuring out how to get gary out of your bed and out of your head if it ain't that you don't need to worry about it don't worry about carrying that baby till that baby come danny is fine she ain't gonna sleep with no more random men for a while so you ain't gotta worry about that fatima damn sure is okay because she's taking care of you too focus on getting gary out of your head and your bed and your god dang on clients because nothing else needs your random concern and fake sincerity. Y'all can let me know what y'all think about Andy in the comment section down below. But I'm done with this. She's really stressing me out. And low key, she really should have gave Robin a real chance. Like, I don't understand why they were just F buddies. It's clear that he wants more. I thought that you deserve more. But I guess that is yet to be seen, Andy. Now, getting to the meat and potatoes of this episode and pretty much all episodes of Sisters of Fine if I am going to be honest, right? The meat and potatoes are Karen, Zach, and 
by proxy Fatima. Um, so let's talk about it. Karen confirms at the top of this episode that Zach is actually the daddy based off of what the doctor told her in the timeline. This was the cliffhanger from last episode for the mid-season cool. There's still so many people who don't believe it and say Karen is a liar. Okay. But also let's wait till we get DNA and everybody just shut the hell up about it because I'm tired. Okay. I'm tired. At this point, it really don't even damn matter. She's not even showing yet. Just shut up. Everybody shut up about this, the, about the paternity, please. <sighs> Danny, in the moment that Karen is talking about it, because or when Karen is pausing, because that's a whole other thing. Karen takes a second. She takes a while to actually tell people, and she don't actually look happy. And Danny's like, well, shoot, I remember. So I'm going to go ahead and check the calendar. And a lot of people talk about this could mean that it's not actually Zach's baby. Or this could mean that she's actually calling to a time where Karen and Zach actually had sex way before them having sex at the salon, which was when they made up and Karen brought Zach home from Danny's house. And she would remember that day because it's a day that also her and Karen made up because they weren't even speaking for a while. That's just a note. Please do not jump in the comment section and try to argue me down about this. As far as I'm concerned, it's Zach baby until this baby comes out of her vagina and we are able to swab it. I'm not talking about anything else because I don't care actually. And the other thing I want to know about this whole moment is the girls decide to meet up after or a little bit later at... Andy's house to talk about it. Karen, they have been talking about you this entire time without you, girl. Let them continue to do it because you don't need to be there. Anywho, this is happening over there. Zach decides to stop by and tell uh, Fatima about the meeting that he had with Lori, I think her name is. The um, attorney that told him that he needs to go and try to make nice with these mothers so that he don't get raked over the coals for everything that he got. And Fatima agrees. Like, okay, cool. You need to go make peace. He's talking about some, all right, I'm going to go down. I'm going to go over to the salon. I didn't even catch this y'all until I sat down and started to make this video. But she didn't want him to go to the salon because when he go there, it's a 50, 50 chance that he's going to throw Karen up against the wall and get it in. <laughs> That's why he didn't do that. I personally think it's a great idea for her to come over to the house and then to sit down as adults across from each other and just figure out how they about to plot out this life and navigate the best life for them, but also in for the purpose of enriching and raising the best child they could possibly raise but also i'm like oh yeah when he go to that salon it's a 50 50 chance of got it girl i see you fatima now what i didn't agree with with fatima is her talking about well i'll call them no you're not going to call the mothers of his children for the initial interaction so that he can try to set up some type of co-parenting plan that is for him to do fatima can you please stop trying to fix all of Zach's messes? A lot of the lessons, evolution, and growth that he still needs to be the man that you actually deserve is in him getting down in the mud and cleaning up his own sh You stepping in and handling everything for him is not doing anything for that man. Except for enabling him. Coddling him putting yourself in a position for him not to grow in emotional intelligence and romantic discipline girl stop it i know some of y'all ain't gonna like to hear that i'm still rooting for zatima but i am rooting for zatima well specifically fatima to get the partner that she deserves within this relationship because she's already far ahead not this is gonna sound so bad I want to say far ahead of what Zach deserves, but like, I'm cool with them as a couple. They love each other. They care deeply for each other. They are really physically attracted to each other. Cool, cool, cool. Fatima checks off pretty much every box for Zach. Zach don't check off enough boxes for me. Zach is not emotionally equipped enough to be who he would need to be in a relationship with Fatima. There's certain areas that Zach is still lacking and I would like for him to steadily and hurriedly get those things together, especially if you're going to try to force this girl down the damn aisle. The least you could do is come to her equipped as the best possible person that you can be, but one that is perfect for her as well before you try to make this make this woman your wife all behind y'all's great sex, good conversation, and a couple kikis and laughs. Like, y'all look absolutely amazing together, but when it came to that end situation, you dropped the ball. Where's our growth and healing from that, Zachary? Where's our standing down in the mess and, and really questioning what you did wrong and what you did right and how you can do better? Because there's still so much that he doesn't know about Fatima Wilson, and I don't actually see him pursuing getting clarity on those things so that he can find a way 
to be the man that she actually needs. It's not enough to just provide a great house and good dick. I said it once, I'll say it again. Y'all probably gonna hear it in another video. I'm just saying. And other than that, Fatima hires a gold digger to come after Hayden and some plans to try to take him for all that he got to get back at him for what he's doing with Zach because he also serves Zach in this episode. I don't really understand this plan. I think that this plan is a dollar short and late and it's probably not going to work. And I don't like the idea of it, but it's also giving something to say, something to do within the story. So we're going to go ahead and roll with it. Now it's your turn. Let me know in the comment section what you thought about the episode. What are your predictions, thoughts, theories, all of that. Let me know in the comments down below. Hit that subscribe button and turn on your bell notifications so you don't miss out on any of my sister's videos. And I will see you in the next one.